welcome to another edition of DSC Charity Questions. My name is Cathy Shimmer. I'm one of the training consultants at Directory of Social Change. In this episode, we salute International Women's Day. The theme for the 2022 International Women's Day is Gender Equality Today for a Sustainable Tomorrow. Um, the social media has to, hashtag that's being used is hashtag break the bias. So if you're looking at these podcasts and you're putting your own messages out on Twitter and into the world and, and so on, please do use that um, break the bias hashtag and that, that gets the conversation going for all of us. So at DSC, we just thought we'd get a few of us together. Um, very busy day at DSC today, but we've got a handful of our female colleagues together just to think about what that gender equality means in our individual and collective contexts. The first thing I'd like to do is just let my colleagues who are in the room introduce themselves as well. And um, some of us during the conversation, some of us might talk a bit more, some of us might listen a bit more and whoever's here will just participate as they wish. Over to you colleagues. Hi, um, I'm Gabriella. I am a digital content and communications officer here at DSC. Hi, I'm Abby and I'm a researcher at DSC. Hi, I'm one. I'm also a researcher at DSC. Hi, thanks for joining us today. Um, we, we, we had this conversation earlier. We don't come here as any sort of gurus or fixers of the problems. We're, we're having a conversation. We're, we're talking about it, as you say, to salute International Women's Day and think about what our experiences have been. And some of us might only be getting to the point where we're reflecting on these things as things I may well have not thought about till, till this point, and it'll come up in the conversation. We, we'll see how the conversation goes. Um, so what, one of the things I was thinking about was we, we've done a you know, fair amount of work at the Directory of Social Change over the last couple of years around DEDI. And there's, there's um, positive, good diversity in many ways in, in DSC. But thinking about this conversation, I was pondering the diversity among those who identify as female at Directory of Social Change. And even in this group, um, just those who identify as, as female at DSC, we look different, we speak different, we've got all sorts of different backgrounds, and um, we definitely have different behaviours, we've no doubt got different motivations and, and different values on things sometimes. My first question, open up the discussion, is what do you see as the value and benefit of those differences in a workplace, any workplace? What are your thoughts? Um, for me, it's definitely about ideas, the sharing of new ideas. People come from different places and have different experiences and see the world differently. Um, and it adds so much value to bringing a team together because that difference itself, it can really ignite new, new changes to arrive with, with, arise within an organisation. Um, so yeah, va value it really highly, to be honest. Yeah. Well, so anyone, anyone, any thoughts to add? I don't, you know, on the back of Gabriella's point, I was thinking, you know, um, I, I like the people bring things I don't see. You know, we we all have our sort of limitations, don't we? Have our view of the world and our experience of the world. Mm -hmm. I like the, the what once you've got diversity, people will show me things that I don't see or raise things yeah. that I haven't been looking at or ask questions that I, I might not have considered. And yeah, Gabriella, they bring um new perspectives to, yeah. to what might be old problems for me. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I like that value. Any other thoughts, anyone? I think it's good the way that you say that because it's easy to drop into stereotypes and saying, you know, women are more nurturing or as a manager, they might be a certain way. Whereas if you just think about it as everyone has comes from a different background and can offer something different, it like helps you to not turn it into that sort of binary way of thinking about like gender and like roles. Yeah, yeah. So if we're looking to improve our gender diversity, just getting a load of women in to make up the numbers might do something to change something. But unless we bring in diversity within that change, um, we're, we're not maximising on it really, are we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say uh, also, I guess it goes on what Abby said about this binary. I think the binary has definitely been the norm um, for a very long time, seeing things very this way and that way. Um, but 
incorporating diversity is just like almost an act of like resistance against that binary in a sense um and I guess for change to really happen we have to step out of it um and yeah because it's viewpoints it's all about how you see the world isn't it and if if we step back from that actually it, it will bring more equality almost yeah yeah somebody once said to me we don't see the world as it is we see the world as we are and that obviously brings yeah. limitations to to our perspectives doesn't it so so yeah yeah great points thanks um so, so yeah, I did want to start talking a little bit about the diversity, but you know, we're not going to have this conversation without the the topic of inspiration and and who's in, inspired us. A, a bit of a story from my background, really early on in my career, in my early twenties, um, so I was quite young, and I witnessed a male colleague making which really lewd suggestions for the relief of migraine to a female colleague, and the CEO just there in the room, literally just took to him like like one of my Irish aunties would have done actually um, no punches pulled no delicate approach don't you dare we're not having that here next time we'll be talking job security and I just remember that moment of thinking I'm gonna always stand up for that you know feel like I can speak out uh, about these things which I will I definitely had not done all the time up until that that point in my career and probably still struggle with it from time to time now um so yeah the you know the late great case o'sullivan at carmichael center in dublin inspired me and perhaps my irish aunties who's inspired you male or female positively or negatively um, to consider gender equality in your career for me um one of my sociology lecturers she taught some modules on gender and things like that um, and feminism and I always remember one of the, the classes she was talking about women in the workplace and how they're expected to be neat and like have their hair all straight and like almost like a mix of beauty standards and just expectations for women in the workplace and she had really curly hair so she would always just come like to lectures with her big curly hair and she would just wear whatever she wanted and I'm not saying that we should go to work looking like scruffs, but like, but because there's a time and a place, but just like challenging those expectations, that was really like inspiring for me. Like when you start thinking like, wow, yeah, like why, when I was working in an office, why did I feel like I had to straighten my hair every day? Um, things like that. Like you just start thinking, well, no, I'll just be myself. Like that's good enough. Yeah, yeah, I remember in the 80s, you know, it was all about power women and all that kind of thing. And what did most of the women do? Stuck a suit on. Stuck a suit on and went into a boardroom. And was, no, no. We, you know, we don't have to sort of follow the patterns. It's by breaking the patterns sometimes and, yeah. you know, breaking the sort of accepted assumptions and, and conventional wisdoms. It wasn't that long ago either, was it? There was, there was a banker, a female banker, and her job was on the line because she wasn't wearing high heels. Mm -hmm. It was part of the dress code to wear high heels, and she said she would if everybody in the organisation wore high heels. I think she so good. got away yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think there's like a level of sort of during that time where women would have to wear suits of sort of like imitating what the powerful people in their lives, and I guess predominantly they would have been men, male figures in powerful positions. Um, so I think that element definitely comes in. I feel like now it's getting like more people feel like that they can address sort of how they want to. Um, and professionalism is a little bit more like fluid, fluid. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, wearing high heels to work. I couldn't I wouldn't be able to bear it personally, but yeah. It shouldn't, oh, it shouldn't don't, don't tell our chief exec Deborah Alcott Tyler she <laughs> mourns the loss of, of wearing high heels to wear really so, so yeah not not that we should have to we yeah. just have the choice to but we shouldn't yeah. be required to and exactly. it shouldn't be the expectation but enjoy it if you if you love it yeah, yeah. <laughs> um I, I thought you know I was thinking as well about that whole you know with women in, in suits and, and what we brought to the workplace in the ACs. 
and 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 there was that sort of default i think gabby that what women trying to move into positions of power or influence or, or whatever within a workplace that that replication um what do br- women bring to our workplace that isn't that what are the things that we do want to celebrate that come into the workplace that women bring empathy. gabby i can see you itching girl. yeah empathy mm-hmm. i feel like we're really good at knowing the room and making people feel welcome i've noticed Mm. that throughout my career it's yeah um Mm. yeah empathy is a big thing i feel that i felt from other women in in my life and in my career throughout these few few years yeah emotional response yeah is something we've often been criticized for as women at the board table or or in other contexts you know having Mm -hmm. an emotional response to things but I think it's a a valid response and it includes um it it, it brings in that diversity includes that other perspective that that you're talking about it speaks to humanity more broadly than than you know just sort of the logical approach to problem solving I you know I like to bring the the emotional response and considerations into that as well so yeah I, I I do value that um, and and yeah, it was a real criticism at one one point, and I still think there are places where it's not acceptable. Yeah, if if you were to get over emotional, and again, it wasn't that long ago, was it, where we heard politicians talking about a a female politician as being tired and emotional, dear? Mm. You know, so there, there still is obviously that that thinking out there some, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Other thoughts? What what do women bring? to the to the workplace what characteristics yeah i'd say they're very supportive um all my managers so far apart from stuart at the se have been female and whenever i had any issues with work um they always pick up on it before i even tell them and they always go above and beyond to to help yeah yeah, that 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 sort of validates that empathy the intuition we pick up on it before we tell you know yeah. I think that is the case, you know. I'm sure there are some men that pick up things intuitively that are highly e- empathetic and so on. But as it is a thing that's often been attached to us, supporting, nurturing, focus on emotional, it's to have those seen as being positives in the workplace. That's the that's the change, I suppose, we want, that they can be positives to, to bring to the workplace. Yeah. And also that men can be emotional and supportive, you know, they can be that too. And mm. I guess there's, you know, that whole thing about um, how women are deemed as like extremely emotional, but men are like emotionless and shouldn't have to ta- show their emotions or cry and all these things. But it's putting that balance and seeing it as a positive for both women and men in a sense, you know. <laughs> the equality is where we can all cry our hearts out at work if we need to (laughs) is that is that gonna help yeah so um you know you again you can't really have the conversation I've talked a little bit about diversity a little bit about access Uh, sorry a little bit about inspiration and I'd like to talk a little bit about access and this maybe takes things a little bit more on a global level and not just a, a, a workplace level but gender inequality means we really do um but gaining gender equality means we really do need to address some of the access issues, doesn't it? You know, equal access for women to education, equal access around female health issues, career opportunities and glass ceiling stuff that still exists and so on. Um, my manager, Ricky Joseph, she sent this question in and apologises for her absence and salutes women on International Women's Day. And she was asking, can we share a time when bias prevented us from doing something about from doing something and what we did or didn't do about it so can you share a time when bias prevented you from doing something and what you did or didn't do about it her straightforward but shocking example is not being having not been allowed to do it at school so she signed up to the typing course. She says, I signed up to the typing course thinking at least I'll get the keyboard skills. <laughs> Came in handy. Yeah. What biases have prevented you from doing something where you may or may not have done something about it? Um, so mine is 
um, that when I was younger in school, in secondary school, probably like 15, 16, um, we, we, I found that the sports were quite like gendered. It would be guys do football or rugby and then girls do netball or hockey. Um, and I remember we would play rugby every now and then and football, but it wouldn't be like, we wouldn't have a team for it. Um, and we always found it really fun when we got to play rugby and we got a bit miffed that like we weren't able to have like be in a team and like play against other schools. Um, so me and a bunch of other girls like came together and basically like made our own team and sort of set it all up um, on our own kind of thing to and then scheduled like different days to do training and all these things and I think yeah it was just a really good opportunity for us to just like be like why is this why is this the case like why isn't this being here to support us yeah yeah and it's a, it's a nice example that speaks to that old adage of be the change you want to see yeah, yeah. you know and, and taking responsibility to right what what can I, I do about this yeah nice example Gabby thanks I've got another like I guess sport example um because I do salsa dancing and you have like a lead and a follower so naturally it's normally men who lead and women who follow but when you go to like events you just end up having loads of women stood at the side waiting for the men to ask them to dance because there's always more women than men um so I started learning like the lead moves like from like the male um side so now I just go and <laughs> dance with whoever I want and I don't have to wait at the sideline. <laughs> I absolutely love that, Abby. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. If if that's the thing I need to learn in order to get and be a part of this, that that's what I'm gonna do, and and, and make make some waves there. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. There's an old organisation, an, an existing organisation called Global Action Plan, but their their old strap line used to be, "Think global, act local," and I think. That's really relevant for us as women. We've got to sort of challenge the everyday stuff that we see, but we've also got to develop our awareness and make contributions to the more international gender inequalities that are there. Um, so, so thinking about global challenges for women, um, what is one thing that we can do individually or and or as a society to end gender inequality and break the bias bias I think for me it's definitely about representation um whether it's in um the media whether it's in any position of power I think that is like the most crucial well not the most sorry one of one crucial element to gender equality um for young girls to grow up with like looking at people like them in those positions to be inspired. I think that is really, really important. Um, and it is getting better, I feel. There's a lot more of it, but when it comes to politics, it's, you know, when we look at the people in our political system, um, it's not even just about gender, you know, diversity is not there The people, you know, people who are leading us, it's not, it doesn't feel like it represents our country and the people in it. So I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah, it's back to that point of diversity. And, and yet, we, you know, when we, when we see like us, it proves it's possible, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. What else? What, what, what else can be done? What can we do individually? What, what can we focus on collectively? I guess following on from Gabby's point, like if we follow certain people on Instagram or like educate ourselves more on issues that women around the world are facing, then you kind of get out of your little zone that you're in. Because um, like, it's, I guess it's all like relative as well. So in the UK, we've got things like like poverty, but then if if you compare it to like different countries, like they all have this specific, like gender issues on different scales affecting different people from different backgrounds so yeah just remember like all the different things that women around the world are going through 
Yeah, yeah, thanks, Abby. There's, um, yeah, that, that idea that the barriers for women are not the same for all women in all places across the world. We'll, and, you know, we need to become aware of what those barriers are. There will be barriers for other women in other countries, cultures, demographics that I am not aware of. And I'm not sure how much I'm, I'm screeching. I can, you know, now I'm aware of um, the, the, those inequality issues. Yeah, that, I, I really see a lot around women's health, and I, you know, I don't know if that's, you know, that might be an age thing. I, I try not to have um, too many conversations about it all the time, but I won't hold back from ha having conversations about things like menstruation and menopause and and those kind of things. And I certainly would have done in my younger days. And my those same Irish aunties would have wrapped my knuckles had I been talking about it in public as well. So even even women's expectation of what we can talk about ha has changed, and that that's that's got to be a good starting point for it. Society wise, we've got to earn that gender pay gap yeah did did i talk about this already um i, I know women in their 70s who have been retired for 10 years you think it's all sorted because they were campaigning for it 20 30 years ago pay equality and they're, they're retired hoping it's all sorted and we're still dealing with that and that's a real you know change that or fairly quickly overnight it's quite a simple thing to change try and get the guy that was making lewd remarks about relief for migraine you know changing that kind of thing that takes time that takes investment it takes conversations it takes understanding the empathy that you talked about Gabrielle and all that kind of thing but leveling up on the peg it's it's a mechanical operation like let's let's get it done and I think that would make a lot of difference as well yeah Definitely, for sure. I think it the thing with sort of monetary inequality is that it is sort of at the moment kind of driven by a sort of already a system that facilitates male power in a sense, or so it's it's um I've lost my point. <laughs> Sorry. In, in, infrastructure still exists that yes, are yeah, preventative exactly. from that representation yeah. and, and, and things like that that you were yeah. talking about. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, what campaigns and movements around gender equality interest you? Who might you recommend to follow? What's going on out in the world that you'd direct somebody to take a look at? I read a book by Stacey Dooley. I can't think of what it's called. It's something that's got women in the title and you know because she travels a lot and um, looking at like women's issues and it just gives you case studies of women that have like overcome things in their lives but just from all different countries and like I don't know it was a really powerful book um Stacey Dooley yeah and then yeah. someone I've followed more recently she's an artist um called Sophie T I don't know if anyone's heard of it she's got um a gallery in London and she paint well she went through a phase of painting um women's like nude bodies but like all shapes and sizes and all their campaigns um were like targeted at getting representation of like women's bodies um and she's also like a really good businesswoman so the way that she sells her art is different um she doesn't use like agencies and stuff so she just sells directly um and a lot like cheaper, I think. I don't know what like the, her business model is, but I know that she's challenging the way that like selling art is done. So it's really cool. Anyone else? I, I've got my own little sort of campaign going on at the moment that we need to get rid of um, Miss, Mrs. Miss. And I've been banging on about it for, for years. So um, I'm taking an active stance that when I'm asked, are you Miss, Mrs. or Miss? I ask, do they want to know if I'm married? or if I'm female, or what, what is the information that they want to know? And if there's an option to not fill in that field, I am not filling in that field until things mm -hmm. change. And even like, you know, simple stuff, we talk about local and global, that's how I want it to be everywhere, that there's no declaration in my title as to my marital status, or my preference for my marital status, because that, that's the other option we were given, wasn't it, you know? Um, but I, I, I just want an M there. 
you know, if, if I wish to identify as, as female anyway. Yeah, so that, that's my little personal campaign, I think, that I address that every time um, it, it's put to me. And I was going to say on a, on a local level, I was really pleased. We're doing a, a new CRM system at Directory of Social Change. And I was just small pleasures every day just to see that that field is not in our CRM mm-hmm. system. You know, Mr. Miss, Mrs. Moon, all, all mm-hmm. that. Let's just yeah, yeah, get, get rid of some of that for, for a lot of the time. Yeah. What else? What do you want to see happen? Abby, sorry. I've been doing a similar thing, you know, with these like diversity forms when they ask you about your gender and your sexuality. I just think like, I know it's important to measure in certain like circumstances, but yeah, just put in prefer not to say because trying to like be why does it matter more than, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because there is that I want to contribute to the monitoring and measurement of things so that things can change, whoever's analysing that data and re- responsible for using it to, to make changes. But also there's just a little bit of a, I don't want to play your game. You know? <laughs> I don't want to play your numbers your numbers game on yeah. this. Let, let's talk about the, the, real, the real things that will make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything else anybody would like to add before we we close our session today? Burning points that you thought I really wanted to say this before I left today. I just really wanted to mention um, uh, something that I've been really into um, is a type of feminism called intersectional feminism as well as eco-feminism. And they both incorporate sort of all intersections of society Um, which are just as equally as important um, to change the system that we currently are living in Um, and how oppression works itself is usually through different like sections of society as like a whole like class, race, gender, sexuality, all of those things incorporated Um, and then also ecofeminism is sort of like about the environment And that incorporated into it as a, you know, our destruction over the environment is almost like male domination over women and um, non, I'm sorry, minority genders. Um, So yeah, I just really like those sort of theories of like feminism, like eco-feminism. I studied it at uh, uni and I just think it's like really amazing, like incorporating all of those sorts of like intersections as well as like environmentalism. yeah. Thanks for that, just, Gabby. Uh, That's really helpful. Thanks, Abby. You wanted to add a point? No, Gabby just reminded me of um, there's a feminist conference called Philia, um, and they really like try and include different types of feminism. I think it's in Cardiff this year, and um, it's in mm. a different location in the UK each year. Um, but yeah, some of the, I remember going to a talk and it was about veganism and how it's actually tied to feminism of like, the sexualization of animals so if you go to like a burger bar there's normally like a big cow and like she's yeah, like yeah it's really it's it was I've never thought of it like that before um, yeah see how it's like interlinked but yeah it's really I did my whole dissertation on like uh vegetarian feminism which is like it sort of incorporated the fact that like women often get compared to meat itself um feeling like a piece of meat kind of attitude and how like men are always associated with eating meat as well like burgers steaks yeah. and all of these things it's just like they're really interesting <laughs> it is really interesting I love that my daughter's vegan and she's brought the idea of eco-feminism to me which I hadn't Did come she? across before oh. Gabriella yeah yeah she's as I think she's got it as a concept she's not looked yeah. into it in a, in a yeah, great deal but, but that idea of meat and women comparisons and, yeah. and so on she's sort of onto that and needs to look at it a bit more so I need to add actually to the the my inspiration list is actually the younger women coming coming through you know um I, I've fluctuated in feminism throughout my life sometimes shying away from those that were speaking on my behalf and sometimes pushing to the front to to have my own say and, and different things but but yeah definitely I love the idea that the the women who are 
who are coming into my workplace now and who are coming into the world as younger generations re are really inspirational as well. And that they do th see things on that big, big global level. As you've explained, Gabrielle, it's all these things in, in tandem and all these things in hand is possibly where a lot of the solutions lie. I'll bring our charity questions to a close for today. Thanks all for, for your contributions and sharing your experiences out there in the world. I think we can agree. I, you know, I, I talked about access, I talked about inspiration, and I, I talked about diversity and the, you know, the three areas is that we can focus on. We can keep challenging um, negative as attitudes, challenging them positively so that it's productive and it moves things on, doesn't close down our arguments um, and maybe a word for, for organisations because I started by saying, you know, we're, we're pretty good at DSC with, with, with diversity and so on. Um, but for organisations, maybe one thing they can do is take a really honest gender equality audit within your organisation and set some gender equality goals and make sure it's a collective forum who are, who are working on that, not one individual male or female yeah um international women's day well worth it wonderful women out there thanks to you three for joining me today thank you thank you